Hello and welcome to Gardening of 58 North. So in this video I'd like to show you how to separate a ZZ plant. Now there's a couple of reasons why you would do this. First of all if you want to get more of them, it's a good way of getting more plants and it's a, it's a much safer way than using cuttings and you'll also get a much more established plant straight away. And the other reason is it might be getting too big for its pot. You need to repot it but you don't have a pot big enough so separating it is a good way of, of kind of sizing down the plant so it will fit its new pot better. So this one for example isn't too congested from the looks of it. You can see there for the size of the pot there's not too many leaves but this is actually badly pot bound. You can tell by from the side of the pot you can see it's actually bulging here because there's so many roots and tubers starting to push out. And the way the ZZ plant grows and this is why it's, it's such a hardy plant is it has these tubers underground a little bit like potatoes. They store a lot of water and nutrients and they'll just keep expanding over time so it can quite easily start to fill up the pot and get root bound. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you're wearing gloves. ZZ plants are mildly toxic so you don't want to get any of the sap on your skin and there's a good chance for separating them. If you damage the roots you might get some sap on your skin. So the next stage is to get it out of the pot. Now it can be tricky if it is as pot bound as this one here and depending on the shape and size of the pot you might have to actually cut the, the pot or break it to remove it. But one way you can do to help it is just to kind of squeeze all around, gently loosen it up. Now you don't want to squeeze too hard because you don't want to actually damage the roots too much. But you just want to loosen it up, make sure that there's a bit of a movement there. And then also check underneath if there's any roots coming through you can cut them off to help uh, make it easier to take the plant out. And then you just want to push from the bottom like this. And then if it's not too compacted it should be able to pop out of the pot. So with my plant it is a bit too congested to easily get it out of the pot without damaging the roots. You can often tell it's going to be too congested because it, you start getting this bold shape on the side of the, the plant pot. So I'm just going to cut through my pot and remove it that way. So that's it now out of the pot. What you want to do first of all is remove any loose compost. You want to try and see how many roots you've got and where the tubers are so you can figure out where to separate the plant. So I'm just going to dust it off here, get rid of any excess compost. That way I can get a much better view of these tubers. You can see there's a nice big kind of potato like tuber down there. What you should find is each shoot should be attached to a tuber. Now this one interestingly, this leaf here was the original cutting. This tube is formed and formed this plant. Now depending on how the plant would have propagated, you might find you don't have two or three plants. You've actually got several on one tuber. What you can do is cut the tuber with a knife, but you just have to make sure you let it dry out for a few days afterwards before planting again so it doesn't become rotten. But in most cases you should have several individual plants especially if you bought it from a shop. So you just want to find the, the biggest tubers and just carefully prise them apart and you should then be able to get your individual plants. So you can see here that came apart quite nicely. We've got this one here. It's got a nice selection of roots on it and a couple of large tubers and then it's got that section of growth out the top there with the leaves. And then looking at the other side, again we've got a couple of nice tubers, plenty of roots and we've got some leaves coming out the top and in fact I could if I wanted probably separate this one off on the right and it looks like I could get three plants if I wanted but for this demonstration I'm just wanting to separate it into two. So now that you've got your plant separated into two or more sections it's time to plant it up into the new pots. Now soil choice is quite important at this stage, most multi-purpose compost and most houseplant compost aren't really ideal. You can grow them in in multi-purpose compost but it tends to hold a lot of water and if you are not careful the roots can quite easily get rot and start to die so you're much safer if you have to use a cactus compost or a succulent compost or you can do what I have done and that's get a mixture of perlite and multi-purpose compost and create your own mix. So I've also got some expanded clay in here and a little bit of bark just anything to aid to the drainage of the compost will make these plants much happier they really are semi-arid plants, they can handle a lot of dry conditions. If it gets too dry, they can just store water in the stems, the roots and the, and the tubers. So they're really suited to dry conditions, so don't let the roots get too wet, otherwise they will rot. So now I've got the right kind of soil conditions, I'm just going to get my plant, position it in the pot, just check the height. So I can see there it will be a little bit too low in the pot. So I'm just going to top it up slightly with a layer of compost. And then I'm going to check the height again. And I'll just do this several times until I get to a height where I feel it's ha I'm happy with the height of it. Now when it comes to the height of the plant, what you want to do is make sure this tuber is fully buried. And you've got quite a bit of leeway. You could bury this probably an inch or two underground if you want. Generally though, it's best just to have it very slightly covered. And when it comes to burying the stem, you can often see where it was buried previously because it's whiter. You can see here, this stem is quite white, then it goes green. So that's about the soil level I want. But you can bury it anywhere from just above the tuber right up to the first leaf. So that's kind of like the variance in how much uh, flexibility you have in the depth of planting. 
So I'm just going to plant this now, and one thing to note is you'll have a section where the tuber grows from. It normally just grows from one point unless it's a very large one, so that's where the new growth will occur. So you want to position this so that the new growth can come out and it's got space to grow into. So I want this in the middle of the pot, I don't want this side in the middle of the pot. But you also need to bear in mind this tuber might continue to grow in size, so you do want to have a little bit of space around this, not have that ground right up against the edge of the pot. So I'll just arrange this plant into a good position. And then once I'm, I'm happy with the position, I'm just going to hold it there whilst at the same time filling in with compost and just making sure all the roots are tucked down. So I'm just going to fill in around with the compost. Now it's important to get the soil around all the roots. It can be a little tricky at times. So you can just give it a little shake like that and that will help distribute the soil better around the roots. So I'm just going to keep topping it up until I bury the tuber enough but I've still got a bit of space around the pot so when I water it, the water doesn't overflow straight away. That's it now potted up. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a tamp down, a bit of a, a shake. You don't want to push down too hard because you will compact the soil. They need nice loose soil so the tubers can grow well and the roots can grow well. But that's generally all you need to do. And I'll do the same for this one. Now if you've got a lot of old dead roots, this is a good time for taking the dead roots out. These are quite young plants so there's not any dead roots. These are looking quite healthy so I can just pop that in and plant that up as a new plant. But if you did find a lot of dead or diseased material, now is a good time to remove that. Also, you might often find that with shop-bought plants, they often just grow it in 100% peat or 100% coir, because for them that's an easier, cheaper method of growing. If you can, just remove some of that old compost, give it some fresh compost, and it'll grow much better in a free-draining mix than it would in a multi-purpose mix like this. So that's my two plants now potted up. So when it comes to the aftercare of a ZZ plant after you've separated it, it's best not to water it for a few days, maybe a week or so. The reason is, you just disturb the roots. You might cause some damage to them, there's open wounds. If you started watering now, there's a risk of rot starting to get in and just causing a little bit of damage to the plant. So it's best just leave it a week. They are drought resistant plants. It will be fine even if it's dry compost. So just leave them. After a week, start watering as normal and you should find that the plant does a lot better in its new pot. It's got more space to grow. You should find it starting to bulk up a bit faster now it's got enough space for its roots. So that's all from this video. Hopefully you found it useful and I'll see you guys in another video.